healed, I believe you will leave this place uh, knowing that, you know what, that was really worth my time. So they're going to give you some good substance, and I uh, hope you really enjoy uh, your presentation. So how about a big, big high five for Rick? Yeah! Guys, thanks for having us. Before I begin, real quick, everyone just stand up. I like to do this whenever I do presentations. Go ahead, stand up. How many of you guys heard the term of power posing? Anybody heard that? Yes. Power posing. Paul heard that, right? So power posing. They did this study and they found out whenever we just do like a strong pose, like our hands up like this, or we do the Tiger Woods, and we just hold that for like 15 seconds, we feel better about ourselves. And this is how they figured this out. They did this study with a bunch of children that were blind. They were blind from birth. And they put them all in a room together. They had to play some games. And they found out that whoever won the game, they started going like this, yeah, nah, you know? And they started thinking, how did these children know to do that? They never seen that from anyone else. Mm -hmm. So that's just something that was innate. That was something that's inside of them. And the Bible says that we lift our hands to our holy God. So I believe God put that in us, okay? So what we're going to do, you're going to do a power pose for 15 seconds. And whatever pose you guys want to do, you can put your hands up like that. You can do the Tiger Woods <laughs> thing like this. You can do the Wonder Woman pose. Whatever it is that you guys want to do. You know, you can do the dab, whatever it is. We're going to hold it for 15 seconds. You guys ready? Ready. Is everyone ready for this? Okay, I'm going to record this. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Power pose! Yeah. All right, come on. Come on, 10 more seconds. Hold it up. 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 Yeah. All right, you guys can sit down. I just wanted to get some energy up front. Yeah? Yeah. All right, so thank you guys for joining us again. We hope to answer the question, does God want my business to succeed? And so there's going to be a few of us uh, speaking today, and we hope to answer yes, and we hope to answer this is why and this is how. So I'm going to talk a little bit about networking um, here today, networking, building business relationships, and a little bit about the digital strategy on how we can do it and how we can do it a little bit better, okay? All right. So before I begin, just to let you know, I surveyed some of my business friends. I work with a technology uh, company. I'm almost like a business consultant. I work with a lot of business owners all across the island and basically just figure out how can they do things more efficiently and do things better, save money and make more money. So that's what I do for a living. Um, so I surveyed a bunch of my friends to get some of their feedback on some of these topics that I'm going to be talking about, okay? So we talked about growing your net worth with net worth. So the first question I want to pose to you guys, what is your worth? What is your worth? Is that something that can be found on your P&L sheet? Is that something that can be found with your stock ratings or your company revenue? What is your worth? You guys need to know your worth. And a lot of times we think that it's found there, but your worth is really what's found deep inside of you. Your worth is really what happens on the inside of you. And again, this is about God, right? So we're going to take it back to a biblical scripture. In Numbers chapter 13, verse 33, it says, We became like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. This scripture is talking about the people of Israel. They had a challenge. They had an opportunity to do. And when they went to conquer this challenge, they found that there was giants. There was obstacles in their way. And they thought about themselves, like, oh, we're too small. We can't do it. We can't um, accomplish what we've set out to do. And so because they thought that way about themselves, they projected that image to the other people. And it says, so we were in their sight. So the first thing I want you guys to know is really what is your worth? And you can only find that, your true worth, um, in the Bible. You can really only find your true worth about what God says about you. So I challenge you guys to figure that out, get around to the <coughs> church, and read your Bible. Um, but when we get into networking, there's some reasons why we don't like to network. There's obstacles why we don't like to network, and that's the number one reason is we don't really know what we bring to the table. When we start networking, you need to know what you bring to the table. So this is what Jason Spain, he's a chief operating uh, officer for a company called MCOR in Las Vegas. They do all of the glass glazing for MGM Grand and all that. This is kind of what he said. He said, it's paramount to know your worth and have the confidence, not arrogance in your business. Anyone can do a task cheaply, 
can you do it correctly and ethically is what sets leaders apart. So knowing your worth, don't think of yourself as just a cheap, uh, something that uh, don't have anything to bring or just the value opposition. Know that you have something to bring. When you do that, then we can network the way that is most effective. So that's what we're going to talk a little about with networking. So some of the reasons why we don't like to network, like we said, is we don't really know our worth. Or some people think it's just about getting and not about giving. You're just trying to take, 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 and take stuff from people. And that's why, as Christians, we tend to shy away from networking. But it's really a wrong idea. When we talk about networking the right type of way, we should be thinking first, what can we bring to the table? What can we give to the people that we're trying to connect with? Not what can we get from them, okay? And so this is another uh, CEO that I know. His name is Matt Irving. He owns an IT managed company in California. And he says, networking isn't sales. It isn't marketing. It's building a network of people that you know, that's it. Start with, how can I help you? When we go into networking like this, when we go into networking, how can we help others? How can we be a blessing? How can we give to the person that's in front of us? Then we're more effective because we want to help them and not just take something from them. Some of us think like uh, when I was serving them, some of them were saying that, they don't like to network because people think of it like speed dating. Like you're just trying to see what this person's about, and then again, what can I get from them instead of how can I be a blessing to them? When you go into networking, whether it's things like this or whether it's Chamber of Commerce events, find people that you can help, that you can bring connections with. Be the person, basically, be the colleague that you would want for yourself. And when I say it's all about giving, I'm not talking about free, okay? Remember, that like, goes back to your value, knowing your value. I'm not saying, okay, you need to find out what you can give to this person and give them free. One of the best things that I love about networking is when I'm out talking <coughs> to businesses, I get in touch with a lot of businesses, and they need different things, and maybe my company can't supply it. But what I like to do is I like to recommend those people that I know will take care of the customers the same way that I would. So when you're networking, be that person. Know that you have something to bring. It's hard for me to find someone who can do drywall like Sunny. It's hard for me to find someone who can do masonry like Sean. But I know if I run into someone and they need something like that, I have my fullest confidence to recommend them. Mm -hmm. And that's a value to me because I look good in front of this person that I'm trying to build my clientele with, right? It looks like, oh yeah, this guy's connected, this guy knows what he can do. So again, when you're networking out there, it's not about just trying to give people free, give people discounts, it's you're the expert in your field, and you can be that expert or that recommendation for someone else, okay? All right, uh, some benefits of networking, I'm just gonna <coughs> read a few off, is it strengthens your business connections, you can get fresh ideas and get access to different job opportunities. This is from Nielsen survey. It says people are four times more likely to buy when referred by a friend. Mm -hmm. Think of that. If someone refers you to do something, you're most likely gonna do it, especially if they're a close friend. So when you're out there networking, this is another benefit, again, of doing it the right way. You can get more opportunities, more job opportunities because the referral goes a long way. And this is basically, again, a, Bible scripture, what we're all about, what we're talking about, networking, Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine says, two people are better than one where they can help each other succeed. So as Christians, this is how we should go into networking, is that we're trying to help each other succeed in business. And that's really what we're trying to do with networking. So what we're doing today is we're just planting seeds about the topics that we're talking about. We're not going full in depth because again, we don't have the time for everyone. But if there's something that piques your interest or you want to learn more about, speak to any of the speakers that's up here and we can set a, se a separate time to go more a little bit about it. Okay, so once you do networking, now it's cultivating that relationship. Now it's uh, letting that relationship grow. And so you've heard the term right before. People don't care how much you know until you know how much they care, right? You've heard that term before? And you've heard another term sometimes it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. 
right? Well, in business in Hawaii, we have a similar term and it goes something like this. People don't know what you can do for them. They want to know who you have already done it for. Mm -hmm. So the line of work that I've done, I there's so much things that we can do and I think the products are amazing. It's like so good. And I know it's gonna help this company, but they always ask, well, who's done it so far, right? You guys have come across that for the yes. business? So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about cultivating relationships, building business relationships. It's uh, letting you know that you can reference someone that we've done this before and they can reference with you that these guys have done it before. Here's another stat. 80% of consumers purchase a product based on recommendation, recommendation from someone they know. Similar to what we just talked about, right? 80% of people purchase a product based on recommendations. A word of mouth customer is a sold customer. That's another word I got from someone. This is uh, Bob Barrett, CEO of Coastal Windows. He's out there in Waipahu. He's running his business for a long time. We're talking about relationships. Another big thing is, again, we're not perfect, right? There's sometimes in business that things just don't go the way that we plan it to go. But if we have a good relationship with the customer, with the client, with the partner, that buys us some time or that gives us equity when things don't go that way. And then we make it right and that strengthens the relationship. So this is what Bob said about that. He said, there are times we miss the target. It is how we get over those obstacles that make us great. So sometimes in business, things don't go the way that you plan. Things don't go the way that we think it's going to go. But if we have a good relationship with them, then we can, uh, uh, it gives us basically time to make it right. Whereas if we don't have that relationship with them, if we're not uh, understanding their business and things don't go wrong, then they just pretty much want to just drop you and leave. All right, so some digital strategies of networking. Real quick, there's digital strategies or um, social selling I want you guys to learn more about. So of course, there's things like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, Google, right? Yelp, there's all these things digital. And again, I'm just planting seeds. And if you guys wanna learn more, um, search engine optimization. So if you guys know what that is, how many of you guys know Google? You guys use Google? Mm -hmm. So let's say if I Google, jewelry in Honolulu, Robert. And let's say there's a bunch of different things that come up, and let's say you're 12th on the list, 13th on the list, whatever it is. Study says that most people click on the first two or three things that pop up. So what if there was a way that we could help you move up in those rankings just by changing certain things in your website, or changing the way that you interact with different people. So that's what search engine optimization is. There's right. companies, there's consultants that's out there that can help you optimize the way that you show up on Google's search boards. Um, and so, so digital strategies, here's just some quick quotes and things like that. 60% of today's buying process is complete before the buyer reaches out to sales. 67% of the buyer's journey is done digitally. 75% of business buyers and 84% of C-level, VP-level executives use social media to make purchasing decisions. So social media and the digital transformation is huge. With the generation that's growing up, folks like Gene that does coding, um, folks like Josh that's really uh, into the networking part, the digital piece of these things is very important for us to get to understand and very important for us to get to think of your social media or your digital strategy that's telling the story that you want people to share. Okay? Oh, I'm going to do that. All right, so here's one more set of uh, uh, stop, uh, uh, stats. Digital channels now influence 92% of business buying decisions. How many of you guys, when you think of buying something, you guys go and Google it? You want to buy a car, you go and think about it, right? So 50% of business buyers prefer to gather information necessary to make this decision on their own. So people are getting more smart to go and look online. They're getting more used to looking things up online instead of reaching out to a sales professional or to your company, things like that. 33% of users prefer to contact brands using social media rather than making a phone call. So instead of calling the business, one out of three people would rather message them on Instagram, message them on LinkedIn, message them on Twitter. So 
the digital transformation is very important for us to make sure that we're staying ahead of the game because that's how the, the next generation of customers' clientele uh, are using are using their technology. Companies with consistent social selling process are 40% more likely to get revenue goals than not social selling. So again, this is not about you have to be on Instagram all the time, you have to be on Facebook all the time. It's just saying have a strategy of how you want to get things done. And then real quick, I'll just kind of give you a, a, a breakdown of what these uh, are about. And then again, if you guys want more information, we can talk more in depth uh, another time when we can schedule something. So social prospecting, that's basically using social media as a way to get prospects. So people who are in, say, the insurance field, they're looking at their social media feeds to see if someone has life event changes, like if someone's having a baby or getting married. That's information that they would want to know to offer products that could fit their needs. So when you're using your social media, use it. you can also use it for prospecting. Personal branding, this is a big thing. I hear a lot of people saying that on their social media, they put a lot about their company, like what they are, what they do, but they don't really say who they are. More and more people, especially the next generation, they want to know just not just about what your company does, but who's the people behind you? What do you stand for? What are some of the things that are important to you other than just making money? And so personal branding is a big thing that you guys might want to think about in your digital strategies. Employee advocacy. So our company right now built this whole site that we can just click and reshare certain things that our marketing team does. So employee advocacy is having your employees be the promoters, your employees be the marketers, because again, if they're working for you, they're the one of the ones that's most proud about your brand. So think of a way that you can help them to share about what you guys are doing. And social relationship management, that just talks about the strategy of, of managing your whole social media platform, and then finding the right people. What I want to say about that is, when we talk about social media, be wise with who you connect with. Use wisdom, because the people that you connect with is that's people that's going to be related to your brand. And so I'm going to read another quote. I'm sorry, I didn't put a slide on there. But um, uh, Jeff Gray, who's one of my uh, good friends in Hilo, he runs Netcom Enterprise up there. He basically said, be wise with who you connect with. Not everyone is your friend, and not everyone is a potential customer. So be wise with who you connect with, who you want your brand to be associated with uh, going forward, okay? So that's really all I had to share with you guys uh, today. And again, if you guys have more questions or like to learn more about networking, relationships, or a digital strategy, just let us know after the fact. So I'm gonna call up Calvena.